Hi, my name's Frances McIntosh. I'm the curator of Roman collections for English heritage based on Hadrian's Wall. Many of the utilitarian items used by the Romans were made from iron. This included fixtures and fittings, as well as tools. This film will deal only with iron tools, those items used to do something, rather than items used to secure or fix materials, such as nails, hooks, clamps, cart fittings or hold fasts. Throughout the film, I'll be using Manning's definitions of these tools, as laid out in his catalogue of the Romano-British iron tools, fittings and weapons in the British Museum, which was published in 1985. It is almost impossible to define specific tool types as Roman introductions to Britain, as our knowledge of Iron Age tools is very limited. Equally, contact between Britain and the continent before AD 43 would have allowed the introduction of new forms. The tools used by Roman craftsmen changed little until the end of the 19th century. In fact, if a modern carpenter or stonemason was shown a Roman toolkit, they would recognise most of the pieces. This continuity in form makes close dating almost impossible, but general identification easier. However, the corrosion level of iron means detailed identification is often excluded. This is particularly the case where the diagnostic part of a tool is delicate. For example, a file or rasp will simply look like a rod of iron if the teeth are obscured by corrosion. Where possible, tools are classified according to the craft they were used for. However, some tools cannot be classified as such. Knives in particular fall into this category. We have a selection here. They would be used in everyday life, but would also be essential items of the toolkit of most craftsmen. Cleavers are most often associated with butchery, but would also have been useful for those preparing hides for tanning or bone and antler for production. I will deal here with tools which can be assigned to a craft, or at least a function. It is important to remember throughout that most of these tools will have had a bone or wooden handle which has now been lost. The main identifiable tools associated with metalworking are the tongs, hammer and anvil. The tongs would have been used by blacksmiths working iron, as well as craftsmen casting other metals. Other tools, um, such as hammers, chisels and punches, are often difficult to differentiate from woodworking and sculpting tools. Woodworking tools are the biggest group we'll deal with, and they can be divided into two groups. Those which could be used to fell trees and carry out the initial preparation work, and those used for shaping and finishing items. In the former group, are axes, adzes and saws. And we can see here an axe with the hole for the shaft and its blade at the end. Axes are generally defined as having the blade on the same plane as the handle, whilst adzes have the blade perpendicular to the handle. Saws do not survive often, although there is a well-preserved example from the Corbridge hoard. The second group is a large range of specialised tools for more detailed working of wood, which include draw knives and floats used to prepare the surface, and chisels, gouges, drill bits, augers, and bradawls used for cutting recesses of various size and shape. We have here two examples of chisels, a small and a more chunky one with an integral handle. All of these tools have slightly different shape blades or cutting ends depending on the task they were used for. Gouges were often socketed to the handle, whereas chisels could be tanged or socketed. It can be difficult to differentiate between these tools if they are corroded or broken. For example, this item here, which is um, damaged and has lost one end, it's most likely to be a spoon bit with this spatulator end, but we can't be so sure. Tools used for quarrying tend to be larger and more heavy duty than any of the other tools. Picks, axe hammers and crowbars were used alongside wedges. Picks can vary in form, having either a double spike blade, as you can see in this example, although well, this is a rather delicate pick, one spike on one chisel end or a double chisel end. Quarrymen would have used the most suitable of these tools depending on the rock type. On Hadrian's wall, wedges have been found left in the rock. They would have been used alongside an axe hammer to split the rock, taking advantage of pre-existing cracks. We see here a very large example, the hammer would have gone down. Once the stone was removed from the quarry, it would have been worked into shape using similar tools to those used by carpenters, such as chisels, drill bits and gouges. Drills would have been hand worked and the bow drill, you see the example here, could be worked by the craftsman, whilst the strap drill, this example, would have needed an assistant. 
Leatherworking also, unfortunately, used similar tools to those used by stonemasons and carpenters. However, due to the nature of the material they worked with, these tools were more delicate. The main tool by the, used by the leather worker was an awl. We have a small example here. This was used for piercing leather. They came in many forms, as this uh, illustration shows, and vary greatly. Leather workers would also have had shears and knives in their toolkits, but these would have been the same form as used by many other craftsmen. Agriculture is not a craft per se, but iron tools were used for many of the tasks involved, and they are found regularly on Roman sites. We find rakes, mattocks, hoes, sickles, scythes and forks, all of which are almost identical to the ones used by gardeners today or by farmers without machinery. The main item not used today, and which we might not recognise, is something called a spade sheath or a spade shoe. Romans used wooden spades over which they then put an iron rim to give a sharper blade. See an example here of a rounded one, but square ones also existed. The wooden spade doesn't survive, but the iron sheath does, and these are found across Roman Britain. To finish, it's important to show that archaeologists don't have all the answers. Some things we might not have any idea what they were used for. Now bring this as an example. Anyone would like to guess? You know, very welcome. Tools are not the only evidence for craft and industry on an archaeological site. Unfinished items, miscasts and wasters, as well as offcuts or waste, must be taken into account when characterising production on a site. However, being able to identify tools and assign them to a craft is important, and hopefully this short introduction has helped. <laughs>